The Hawks are trading DeJounte Murray to the New Orleans Pelicans. That for multiple reports. Just been revealed that they intend to sign Scotty Barnes to a rookie max extension that will make him the highest paid player in Toronto's history. The Knicks have added another former Villanova player <laughs> to join their other three. Adrian Wojnarowski reports that the Knicks sent a bunch of assets to Brooklyn to acquire Mikhail Bridges. There have been many trades and signings that have happened in a matter of weeks span in the NBA that it's hard to keep track of. Here in this video, I'll give my analysis on each major signing and trade that happened up to this point and how well that transaction will be for the future of the team. Starting this video off, I'll first go over the major trades that happened this past week. The big one that just happened recently was DeJounte Murray to the Pelicans. Looking at the Hawks drafting Zachary Rissache with their first pick, it seemed inevitable that they were going to get rid of either Murray or Trey Young. The Pelicans swooped in and got Murray for Larry Nance Jr., Dyson Daniels, and two first round picks. For how the Hawks played this, I think they played it completely wrong. I said before the draft that they should trade the number one pick for a third star instead of blowing up their team. Instead, they traded their best defensive player for two bottom level role players and two first round picks. I give the Hawks a D for this. As for the Pelicans, they did exactly what I thought the Hawks should do. They traded for a third star to pair with Brandon Ingram and Zion Williamson and are looking to compete this season. There were rumors circling trading Brandon Ingram, but they made the right choice by adding more pieces instead of rebuilding. I give the Pelicans an A-. The next big trade that happened was Mikael Bridges to the Knicks. The Knicks wanted to bring the 2017 Villanova team back together after the success the Nova Knicks had last year. They traded Boyan Bogdanovich a second rounder in 2025, and a crazy five first round picks to the rival Brooklyn Nets for Bridges in a second rounder in 2026. From the Knicks point of view, they're going all in for this next season. From getting bounced in the second round because of injuries to their many major starters, they're building this team for depth without losing their chemistry. A team led by Jalen Brunson and Julius Randle, followed by great role players like the Nova Knicks, is destined for greatness. But they're the Knicks at the end of the day and it will mess up in some way. For the amount of first round picks they gave up, I give the Knicks a C plus. As for the Nets, I think this is perfect for them. They were very disappointing last year, and Bridges obviously wasn't the guy for them. To get rid of him for more first round picks than the Clippers traded for a perennial all-star Paul George, that's a win in my opinion. I give the Nets an A. The last trade I'll go over is Alex Caruso going to the OKC Thunder. This was the first trade that happened this offseason and a lot of us were confused on why the Bulls made this deal. It was a straight swap for the two teams, with the Bulls giving up Alex Caruso and the Thunder getting rid of Josh Giddy. As for how the Bulls are after this trade, I don't see how they make their team better for the future. Giddy doesn't want to come off the bench, which is the reason why the Thunder traded him, but he's not good enough to start. He doesn't have a great shot, his playmaking is subpar, and his defense is lackluster. The Bulls get an F for this. As for the OKC Thunder, Sam Presti works his magic once again and absolutely fleeces other teams. They got a two-time all-defensive team player for a guy that's going to be out of the league in a few years. Alice Caruso gives the Thunder important veteran leadership and a great defensive presence. The Thunder get an A for this trade. The Toronto Raptors made two big extensions this offseason, keeping all-star Scotty Barnes for 5 years $270 million and Emmanuel Quickly for 5 years $175. The Scotty Barnes signing, I don't mind. He's an all-star, can do anything on the floor, and the sky's the limit for this guy. The quickly signing, however, I don't like as much. This contract puts quickly among the best point guards in the league, and unfortunately, that's not how the league sees him. He's a good player, don't get me wrong, just not $35 million a year ago. And considering you traded OG Ananobi at the trade deadline because you didn't want to pay him, it doesn't make sense you to give quickly that type of contract. I give the Raptors a C plus for these signings. The next teams that made long-time commitments to their players are the Knicks and the Heat. The Knicks locked OG Ananobi up for 5 years 212 million and the Heat are keeping Bam Adebayo for 3 years 166. The Knicks are making big moves this offseason and are going into title contention. But it doesn't make sense to me that they would trade 5 first round picks for Mikel Bridges and pay Ananobi 42 million dollars a year as well. Where do these guys fit in the rotation? I give the Knicks a C for this, it just doesn't make any sense. The Heat, on the other hand, made the right move with Bam. Lock up one of the best big guys in the league and the captain of your team. I completely understand giving Bam that type of contract. The Heat get a B for this. 
We were just hit with bombshell news that the hottest free agent on the market, Paul George, has just signed with the Philadelphia 76ers for four years, $212 million. This is a move that NBA fans were expecting, but now that it's official, it's crazy to hear. With the signing, the 76ers now shut out a lineup of Tyrese Maxey, Joel Embiid, Paul George, and whatever role players they can place in that lineup. George provides well-needed defensive help, offensive scoring to take the pressure off Maxey and Embiid at times, and veteran leadership. The only downside with this signing is they don't have a lot of money to fill out the rest of their team. And with almost every key player of theirs heading into free agency this season, it's going to be hard to fill out the rest of the roster. But to have a guy like Paul George as your third star, that doesn't really matter. Mark my words, Paul George is going to be the difference maker for the 76ers chances of winning the championship next season. With this signing, I give the 76ers an A, and will definitely see them being in title contention barring injury. We see the end of an era happening today, as Klay Thompson signed a 3 year $50 million deal with the Dallas Mavericks. After having one of the worst seasons of his career last year, Thompson and the Mavericks still believe he has more left in the tank, thinking he's that extra step to winning the title next year. Thompson still has elite shooting, but his defense and decision making have regressed over time. What this does for the Mavericks is give them that spot up shooter that Luka and Kyrie desperately need. We saw in the finals when Luka and Kyrie would get into the paint and kick it out for an open 3, the Mavericks role players would miss those shots. I think it's a good signing from the Mavs, so I'll give them a B+. The last signing I'll go over is Chris Paul to the San Antonio Spurs. The Warriors released Paul a day before his $30 million salary was guaranteed, and the Spurs swooped in to get him. What Paul brings to the Spurs is that veteran experience and leadership that this young Spurs team needs. The Spurs had one of the youngest lineups in the league last year and adding a guy like Chris Paul can help them learn how to win. Paul also helps with the development of Victor Wembanyama and Stefan Castle, their fourth overall pick this year. Wemby can play off the ball a little more with Chris Paul in the lineup, and Castle can pick the brain of one of the best minds in the NBA. The Spurs did spend a little much on the 39 year old, giving him a one year $11 million contract, but the value he brings can exceed the price tag. I give this signing a B plus. There were so many things that happened in the NBA world so let me quickly give you my winners and losers of this NBA offseason. The winners are the 76ers, Pelicans, and Nets. The 76ers got the best free agent to be their third star. The Pelicans added an all-around point guard to complement Brandon Ingram and Zion Williamson. And the Nets have officially started their rebuild in the best way, by getting as many first-round picks as possible. The losers are the Clippers, Hawks, and Bulls. The Clippers lost Paul George for nothing when they could have done a side-end trade with the Warriors. The Hawks drafted Zachary Risache and traded away a star for Peanuts. And the Bulls traded Alex Caruso for nothing and signed Patrick Williams to a 5 year extension for no reason at all. There are more trades and signings coming in the next week and I'll make sure to give my input on those when they happen. All that being said, I hope you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe and I'll talk to you guys later.